Hey everybody, you know the dealio. I am testing out the audio. How do I sound? Does it sound good? Is the music too loud? Is it too quiet? Am I too quiet? Let me know. I'm gonna get some tea set up and uh, yeah, let me know how the audio is. And today we're gonna be doing some fun designing. Uh, you do still have a little bit of time left if you wanna try voting on uh, what we're gonna be crocheting, but it looks, I think, like we're gonna be making a donut. You let me know though, uh, you still got a chance. The, the vote is in the top of the chat uh, and I'll be on very soon. Okay, uh, sounds good, sounds good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, I'm gonna go get my tea prepped and I'll be on in just a sec. All right, let's get hooking. Hey everybody, welcome to the stream. Oh, how are you today? I'm having a pretty good day. It's a nice Thursday, really chill. It's, it's all overcast out there. It's so nice. I hope you're having a great day. Today, we're gonna be designing some amigurumi. So I'm gonna do this, I, I don't know. I'm kind of improvising here. Uh, not only am I improvising the pattern, but I'm also going to be improvising by teaching the pattern on the video. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> the basic idea here is that I want to design a donut because you guys voted on a donut. 
So we're gonna be de designing a donut today. Uh, and after the live stream, I'm gonna put the pattern onto the website and then I'm gonna like re-edit the video so that I can publish the video like as a as its own pattern. So it's gonna be kind of interesting because I think you're gonna see some of like, I don't know, it either will go really bad or really well. Um, I'm pretty excited for it though. It's kind of gonna be kind of cool because you'll see like kind of like the back end of how I go about designing Amigurumi and how I go about recording my videos because I'm going to try, <laughs> I'm gonna try my best to really try to like be like, hey, you know, this is this is the video tutorial for this and I'm gonna teach all the stitches and stuff like that. I'll do my best. My idea is we'll do the first one being like a kind of a lesson and then I'll talk with the chat a little bit more. And then the second one we'll either do, um, I'm, gonna I'm gonna let it be like a vote. We'll either do a second donut pattern where I'll do like a long donut, a maple bar, cause that's like my favorite donut. Or we'll do, uh, we'll crochet more of the little donuts and uh, we'll customize them based on uh, the chat's uh, suggestions and stuff like that. Whew, okay, so that was kind of a lot. Um, yeah, let's see, uh, <laughs> let's see how this goes. First, let me do the whole introduction dealio and switch the hands and say hi to the chat for a little bit before we get into pattern mode. Look at that, I flipped it. So now when I'm looking down, I'm looking at my hands. I thought it was pretty smart, anyhow. Look at, I got it all set up for us. Isn't it cute? Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is how you can support this channel, What you, and then we'll talk about what you need for this uh, pattern. We'll say hi to the chat real quick, and then we'll get going into the pattern. So I know there's a lot going on here. Um, bear with me. Okay, so first off, how you can support this channel. If you like what's going on here and you'd like to support this channel, it would be really, really cool if you could. Um, the first easy free way that you totally should be doing is like this video down below, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. It's a great way to support this channel. And uh, yeah, also share your projects with me. If you crochet anything that you've made on the Club Crochet channel, share your project with me by posting to our Instagram or our Discord channel or our Facebook group. There's a bunch of different ways we can share your project with me and I just, I really like to see what's going on and it's also a great way to help support the channel too. If you'd like to help support monetarily, now there's a different story. The best way to support monetarily is with the Club Crochet membership. Members get early access to future patterns. They get access to the full library of tutorials. We've got, we're coming up to I think 300 tutorials now and we're doing like a whole new design on the back end. I'm really excited to show you. It should be up soonish um i'm just really excited about it but for example today we came out with a brand new pattern and it is actually in early access Ooh, i just dropped some yarn in early access for membership level accounts only we're making humming burbs this month here let me change it to autofocus for us there we go we're making humming burbs oh so wiggly Humming verbs this month, and this pattern, I literally just put it on to the website last night. So if you wanna get this pattern, uh, you should become a Club Crochet member. It's a great way to support the channel and you get all this like stuff. This pattern will be coming out uh, as a, I think as a free tutorial later this month, uh, but you get early access by being a member. You also get access to the PDF version, and I'm gonna be coming up, coming out with a few other burb patterns this month too. So, you know, it's a great way to support the channel. You also get monthly kits mailed to your door. Yada yada, next month we're making snowmen and Christmas gifts. Sign up now. I mean, honestly, sign up now. The earlier you sign up, the easier it is on our end because we know how many we have to make. So yeah, sign up while you can for next month's Club Crochet Kit and Crochet a Burb with a membership. If you want to support uh, other ways to support, support monetarily, we have kits, merch in the store. We've got little pins, we got t-shirts, crochet kits. Um, we're going to be having this a kit for this humming burb up in the shop. I'm going to try to get it up in the shop this weekend. So if you want to purchase a kit, uh, I will get it in the shop this weekend. Um, oh yeah, last, ooh, I just threw my phone on the floor. Last way to support monetarily is with a tip. If you'd like to, uh, you can tip and I will put something out 
on our shelf of crochet things for you. Um, I'm not going to be putting it out on the screen today since we're going to be doing a tutorial and I don't want to distract too much from the tutorial. Uh, but if you tip, I will give a great big shout out and I'll say thank you. And if you tip during the pattern, uh, your, you know, your tip will come up on screen and it'll be there forever. So that's kind of cool too. Okay. Da, 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 da. How do I do this design along? Okay, so uh, let's let me explain this to the chat real quick because I there's some people in the chat that are kind of confused about how it's going to work out. Ronnie, for example. <laughs> so this is how it's going to work out. I don't know how I'm going to be crocheting this donut yet. I have, I think, crocheted a donut in the past, so I'm going to be kind of working off of that my like how I've done it in the past. Um, but I'm designing it live. I don't know how it's going to go. I'm going to explain my stitches as I go. Cooper's in the chat. Cooper, if you get a chance and you can write this pattern down, that would be super helpful. If you can't, I totally understand. Don't worry about it. Um, I can write it down after the live stream. This pattern is not going to be that long, so it, I, I think we'll be able to manage. Um, uh, but if you can help out, that'd be super cool. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be designing it live. Then after the live stream, I'm going to put it on to clubcrochet.com slash food. That's where you can find all my food related patterns. Uh, and specifically, I'll put it at clubcrochet.com slash donut. Then after I do the tutorial, we'll, you'll decide, do you want another pattern that I'll design live? Or do you want uh, me to crochet more of these little donuts and we'll, uh, we'll customize it with like eyes and like different colors and stuff like that based on what the chat wants. That's how it's all going to work. Um, yeah, what was the last thing I needed to talk about? Oh, Cooper donated. Hold on. Hold on. We got a tip. We got a tip from Cooper. Cooper, you still haven't decided what you wanted up like from two weeks ago. You needed to name something. I can't remember what it, what it was, but I had something out for you that I wanted to like put out for you. But Cooper, we're gonna be putting out, out burbs. That's that's just the dealio. It's burb month. This is our fifth birthday, AKA our burb day. So we're gonna start putting out burbs for people. And so Cooper, you get the flamingo burb. We're gonna start with the flamingo because that's just too cute. So Cooper, you get to name your flamingo burb. And uh, yeah, let me know. I think what we really need is we need like a bar right here. I think I need to like nail a bar onto this so that I can like make the, all the burbs perching on there. So I'm going to try to do that hopefully this week. But for now, we'll have your flamingo burb right here and you can let me know what you want to name it. I chose the bird head, but did, oh, the bird head. Yes, yes, yes. But you didn't name it. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. This fella. This this weird this weird dude, but you didn't name it. It's so creepy and cool. I like it. We'll put it out for you. You let me know what names you want. You can let me know after the chat and I can put them up as well. Um, but yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. And don't worry, yeah, Johnny, don't worry. If you can't donate, if you can't tip, I totally get it. Don't worry about it. I just appreciate you being here and you know, please like and subscribe, but it's all good if you can't support monetarily. I get it. All right, let's get to this pattern. Um, okay, so first off, I'm gonna try to do this like I actually record my tutorials. So I'm going to do, I'm gonna do the intro last and then edit the intro in maybe. Yeah, and, and right now we'll do we'll do my the part of the pattern where I explain all the materials that you need to crochet this pattern. Now, I do this so often now that I think I can do it on autopilot. I think, but we're gonna find out. All right, <laughs> you ready? Let's see how it goes. Uh, by the way, hi chat. I'm sorry I won't be talking with the chat too often in this first part of the pattern, uh, but I definitely will be there in the last half to talk to them and during like middle parts of the pattern. Ready? Here we go. How do I start this? Okay. To crochet this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. I'm going to be using all worsted weight yarn and 100% cotton. It's my favorite kind of yarn to use. Uh, you're going to need a few different colors. You're going to need a color for the frosting. We're going to go with pink. 
for our frosting today, we're gonna go with beige for the main part of the donut. And that's gonna be the main two colors you're gonna need. Then for our sprinkles, we're gonna go white, red, and yellow for the sprinkles. Um, that's the yarn you're gonna need. Again, I like using worsted weight yarn in, hot, in cotton because it's just my favorite kind of yarn to use for amigurumi, but you can use whatever you want. Uh, you're gonna need a crochet hook. I'm gonna be using a size G four millimeter crochet hook in this pattern. Uh, it just works really well with the with the yarn that I'm using. If you decide to use larger yarn, like chunky yarn or whatever, just make sure that you use a crochet hook that works really well with your yarn. You're going to need a darning needle. This is really just going to be to sew it closed. We're going to try to make, try to design this pattern so that there is like little to no sewing. If you know my patterns, you know that I really hate sewing things together. So I'm going to try to do it with as little use of this darning needle as possible, but you'll probably need a darning needle. We'll see how it goes. You'll need a pair of scissors, of course, for cutting ends, and then a little bit of stuffing. And then also you'll need safety eyes if you want to add eyes onto your piece. I don't think I'll be adding eyes and a face on this one, but uh, if you do, we have bottles of eyes like this in the shop. Another great way to support this channel if you'd like to. Okay, so that's all the materials that you're gonna need. Let's get hooking. We're gonna start with our pink yarn making the frosting at the top. Now, like I said, we're gonna try to make this all without any sewing, uh, other than the sprinkles. I'm, it's gonna be really hard to sew, to make it without the sprinkles, but we'll see how this goes. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make a slip knot with our yarn, like that. Okay, uh, maybe I should, should I do a tutorial? Let's do a little quick tutorial on how to do the slip knot, just in case you don't know how to do a slip knot. You take this short end, you fold it over the long end like that, make a little loop. Then you take that loop, pinch it in the center, fold that over itself, and then take the inside and pull it through like that while you hold the tail, and it creates a little knot. And now when you put your crochet hook in it, you can pull this end attached to the ball and it will pull the yarn tight against the crochet hook. I think I'm gonna go from autofocus to manual focus, so that way it doesn't go in and out of focus too too much. If it gets out of focus, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, we are going to start by chaining 12. Let's chain 12. We're going to make a pretty small donut, I think, is, is the goal. So we're going to start by chaining 12 with our pink yarn. How small is it? Maybe we should zoom in a little bit. Let's try zooming in. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, we're gonna chain 12. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, and 12, just like that. Okay, so the goal here is we're gonna make a ring and then we're gonna crochet into all of our stitches and we're just gonna start building it out from there. And it's gonna go out from the center, up and around, and then back down on the inside. That's at least the goal, we'll see how it works. Okay, so I chained 12. Into the very first chain that you made, we wanna do a slip stitch. So we're gonna find that very first one. It's gonna be right here. How does it look on the video? Yeah, you can see it, right? Right here. Chat, let me know if anything is not looking right. We're gonna take our crochet hook, go right into that last chain, yarn over, pull it through that chain, and then through the loop on the hook, like that. And that's gonna be making a little ring. Okay, so what we wanna do into our next round is we wanna do a single crochet into all the chains that you made around. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna chain one. That's gonna give us our height for the beginning of our round. So chain one, and then we're gonna start by single crocheting into the same chain that you slip stitched into right there. So I'm gonna go right into this exact same chain right here, yarn over, pull it through the loop on the hook, yarn over again and pull through both loops on the hook like that to make our single crochet. The goal here is we wanna make a single crochet into all of these chains all the way around. And what's important is we wanna make sure to work so that there's only 12 single crochets around. If you wanna count around, this is their first one right here. 
we're gonna go into this next chain right here now normally I usually like working into the top of the chains and I don't think it's gonna matter in the end of this pattern which part of the chain you work into but because of this first one I worked into the bottom of the chain I'm gonna try to do that for all of the chains so I'm gonna work into this bottom part I think that'll work all right as I go for the first few stitches too, I'm gonna to try working around this tail end just to like make sure it's locked into place. So we're gonna go right here, going into that bottom of that chain and single crochet like that. And we're just working around that tail end like that. Okay, so we're gonna to try to make sure there's 12. So I'm gonna keep count because if there's more than 12, I'm just gonna to have to stop early or something. So we got one, two, this will be three, yeah, that looks pretty good. For the good thing is, if all goes according to plan, this should be uh, hidden on the inside anyhow. So if we make too many mistakes here, it probably won't be the end of the world because it's going to be on like the inside of the donut hole. But we'll see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Because, like I said, we're going to try to make this without any sewing at all. Um, I lost my count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just a few more. Eight. Nine. You can see how it's kind of like turning into a little funnel. Ten. It looks like we got two more here. Really keep track of your count though. Eleven. This one's going to be your last one right here. That'll be 12. Okay, so the idea here is, you are the important thing here is this last one right here is gonna be our slip stitch. We don't wanna work into that. You only wanna work your 12 single crochets. And then find your very first single crochet that you made, which is gonna be the beginning of our next round. But before we go to that, we wanna get stitch markers. That way we can like, keep track of where we're at. You know what I mean? Hi chat, hi chat, how are you? <laughs> we're live by the way. If you're not watching this live, we are doing this live on camera and we're not going to mess up. Yikes. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to take my stitch marker here. I'm just going to hold it over the end like that. And then I'm just going to basically ignore it. And it's going to help us keep track of where the ends of the rounds are. See, I'm just like keeping it through that hole like that. All right. So we want to find our very first single crochet that we made. That's gonna be this one right here. If you need help finding where that first single crochet that you made is, count backwards from where your loop is coming out and count 12 backwards to find the first one. All right, but this is gonna be our first one and now we're on to round two. And I'm gonna start round two by just single crocheting one into the first stitch. All right, so for round two we wanna do, let's see, we wanna make it bigger incrementally you know we don't want to get it bigger too fast so what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna do a single crochet into our first stitch and then we're gonna do an increase into the next stitch and then we'll repeat that process six times total all the way around we have 12 stitches at the beginning of this round and by the end of this round we should be up to 18 stitches if all goes according to plan so we did single crochet into our first stitch into our next stitch that's gonna be right here we're gonna do an increase so two single crochets into the same stitch for our increase. So that should be good. One single crochet, two into the next stitch. And then we'll just repeat that all the way around uh, six times total. So this will be the second single, second repeat, one single crochet, and then an increase into the next one or two into the same stitch. Get one and then increase. All right. Let's keep going around. Who won the cro club crochet challenge? That is a great question, Crafting with Sunshine. I'm going to choose that this weekend. Uh, if you don't know what Crafting with Sunshine is talking about in the chat, we just did a club crochet challenge where people crocheted ghosts, posted pictures of them, and then we're going to choose one person at, uh, not at random. Everybody voted on who they liked, uh, what ghost they liked the most, and that person is ghost like the most wow that person's gonna win a club crochet gift card 
Uh, and we're going to be choosing that this weekend. And then the next Club Crochet Challenge starts November 20th. So if you want to make sure you don't miss that, just go ahead and subscribe down below. And I'll do probably a YouTube short or something like that to let you know when the next live or when the next challenge starts. Okay, so I just finished round two. We did uh, a single crochet, then increase. It should be 18 stitches now. I'm gonna count my stitches just to keep track. And this is gonna be our first one right here. How does it look on camera, by the way? Let me know if it looks good on camera, if you can see the definitions of the stitches. Hopefully you can. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna pull this stitch marker up. I'm gonna pull it up so that this longer tail end goes straight. We're gonna go like that. I'm gonna fold it over, get our crochet hook back in there, and we're gonna continue on to round three. Okay, so for round three, you're gonna to start to see a pattern here. I'm gonna to start to build it bigger and bigger until we get to the size that I like for the donut. I'm gonna to try to make sure this donut is gonna be relatively small. So we're not gonna increase it that much, but you'll start to see the pattern of the increasing here. So last round, we did a single crochet into our first stitch, right? And then we did an increase. This round, we're gonna do two single crochets and then an increase and repeat that process six times around. And that's gonna be, that's gonna get us up from 18 stitches up to, what would that be? Chat, help me out here. 24, that's it, 24. Look at that, I can still do math. Two single crochets, so there's one and two, like that, and then an increase into the stitch after right here. Three and four. So that's gonna be one, two, three, and four, and then we're gonna repeat that six times around to go up to 24 stitches. One, two, three, and four. All right. Yeah, thank you, Cooper. <laughs> Giant dinosaurs are, are wicked. I totally agree. I, um, I've been thinking a lot. The other day we did a live crochet along where we made a giant ghost. And I think I'm gonna start doing more of those giant crochet alongs because they're just really fun to make. And I want to make a giant dinosaur and a giant dragon. Giant dragon is definitely a big goal. Because we can make, I, I was doing the math. It looks like you can make it, uh, my patterns about like five or six times bigger by using that uh, chunkier, I used Bernat blanket yarn in, and it made it really big. But we'll see how it goes next time. All right, so this is gonna be our last increase. We did single crochet two and then increase six times around. And now we should have 24 stitches around. You can see how this donut is coming together. I know what you're thinking right now. This isn't a donut, but it'll work out. I'm pretty sure. We'll see. Okay, we're gonna pull this stitch marker up like that. And we can continue on to round one, two, three, four. We're on round four now, Cooper, if you're keeping track. Okay. So for round four, here goes the repeat. We're gonna keep doing that process where we do, last time we did two single crochets, then an increase. This time, we're doing three single crochets and then an increase. We're getting it bigger and bigger. I think, I think this might be as big as we want it to be. No, you know what, we should go to six increases around, but we'll start here. So we're gonna do two single crochet, or three single crochets, one, two, three, and then our increased stitch after that right here. Four and five, like that. Three single crochets and then an increase, and then we wanna repeat that six times total. So let's do our next repeat. One, two, three, and then our increase right here. One and two. Okay. Let's do it again. And uh, math time, this is gonna bring us up from 24 stitches to 30 stitches around. And a quick shout out to Cooper for writing this pattern down because they're amazing and super helpful. Thank you. 
Another quick shout out to Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Nicole's in the chat. Nicole's my business partner. She helps with all the crochet kits. So if you get a crochet kit from us, Nicole's probably the one that put it together and shipped it to you. So shout out to Nicole. <laughs> all right. We're almost done here. And we should have 30 stitches around after this round. And now we get to decide, do we want to make it bigger or smaller? I mean, bigger or is this the good size for us? All right. So it's gonna go in there like that. It's gonna fold over like that. You know what? Do we wanna make it bigger? Do we wanna make it smaller? Hmm. I always have a difficult time with this part. But at this point in the process, you can keep getting it bigger and bigger and bigger. And just keep doing that same process to make it bigger and bigger as you go. The trick is gonna be creating the um, the oozing, like we want the we want the frosting to like ooze over the edge of the donut, you know, like this. And that's gonna be different based on how big you make your donut. I think, let's see, if, if we did our ooze now, we'd be slip, single, half, single slip, slip. That actually would work. You know what? Maybe we'll make a, sec a second donut and make it bigger in the live stream. But for now, let's make this donut this big. So we'll make it this big. If you wanted to make it bigger, you just keep uh, increasing rounds. So the next round would be four single crochets, then increase six times around to bring us up from 30 stitches to 36 stitches. Look at me doing math. I'm so talented. Wow. <laughs> but I think this is a good size for our donut for a uh, proof of concept at least. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just do a single crochet into every stitch around. And let's do that for two rounds in a row. So once you get to the size you want, we're just gonna single crochet a few times with the same pink color, just into e each stitch around. So I'm gonna do a couple of rounds here. Probably let's do two rounds of just single crochets all the way around using our pink yarn. And we can make it up, like you can make it longer if you want to if you want a really fat donut you could do more than two rounds of single crochets but we're just going to do two rounds of single crochets i'm just going to do it real quick and say hi to the chat hi chat how are you today leaf oh leaf sauce you're already working the you're you are we're sharing a mind right now because leaf sauce says could you do a split maybe which is a way to do single crochets into two different rounds at the same time. We're gonna be doing something very similar to that to make the ooze along the edge once we get these two rounds done. All right, Johnny is heading out. Thanks for joining, Johnny. How do you use that string stitch marker? You never understood how to use it. Uh, using a string as a stitch marker is actually really easy. You just crochet around it as if it's not even there for a round. And then at the end of the round, which is right here, we just got to the end of this round. All I'm gonna do is take this yarn and just fold it over the opposite way. And then at the next round, we'll fold it over the other way and then we'll just ignore it. We'll just like hold it down like this and just keep crocheting around without, without like just totally ignoring it. This next round, by the way, we're doing another round of just single crochets. This is my second round of single crochets. Oh, cool, Jay, that's awesome. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great, you know? Nice, chill Thursday, listening to some cool music, hanging out with some other crocheters. It's a good day. I like Thursdays. Thursdays have become my new, one of my new favorite days because I just get to live stream and crochet with everybody. Hey, by the way, if you're watching this at a later point, uh, like I said in the beginning, we're doing this live on YouTube. If you wanna join our live streams, you totally should subscribe down below. That would be cool. We do new live streams every, well, pretty much every Thursday, starting at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, by the way, the next live stream won't be this Thursday. Next Thursday, I'm going to be doing a uh, an event at a yarn convention in Pasadena called Stitches SoCal. So if you're in Southern California and you want to say hi, come to that event. But we'll be live the week after that uh, for our Burb Day, our Great Burb Day live stream on uh, I think it's November 17th. 
Okay, so I just finished my two rounds of single crochets. You see how this piece is coming together now? This part is gonna be tucked on the inside and sewn together with the end, which will make it into our actual donut shape. But we need to make that bottom part of the donut next. Okay, so here is the here's gonna be a little bit of a tricky part. The first thing we wanna do is we're going to change colors. I'm gonna pull the yarn out like this. I just pulled it out of that last single crochet stitch because now we want to change to our beige yarn like this. And we're going to do a round of single crochets in our beige. So we're going to take the yarn, place it in between the two loops on the hook and the loop attached to the yarn. That's going to be this pink one right here. We're going to hold it down with our index finger of our dominant hand and see that stitch marker. I've already folded it over. We can just totally ignore that. So we're going to hold our beige yarn down with our dominant hand take our non-dominant index finger and place it in between the two colors and we're going to flip it under like that so that the new color is over the old color and then we're going to yarn over with that new color and just pull it through the two loops like that. I'm going to pull that pink yarn a little tighter as well. Okay, into our next round we are going to be doing a single crochet into each stitch but we're only going to work into this back loop like that. We're only gonna work into the back loop. If you look at the top of our crochet stitches, we've been working under both loops like this. From this round, we only wanna work into the stitch that's further from us right here, that one. And that's gonna create a nice little ridge and we're gonna use our pink yarn. We're gonna come back with our pink yarn and we're gonna make our drippy edge along that, uh, using those front loops that we're not gonna use in this round. So we wanna go take our yarn. We can work around our pink yarn for our first stitch we're gonna go into our back loop only. So only this one loop furthest from us. Yarn over with the beige yarn and do a single crochet. And we've worked around this pink yarn just to keep it in place for this round. But we're actually gonna cut the pink yarn and we're gonna come back to it later on using a slip knot. And this is hopefully gonna work. I think it will. I, I really think this is gonna work. Cause if we just keep going and then we decrease it down and then we sew the top, We'll see, we'll see. Let's hope it goes, let's hope it goes well. So I'm doing a round now of single crochets using our beige yarn, working into this back loop, the furthest loop from us, all the way around as I go. So there's three, and we'll keep going, there's four. And if you wanna keep track of your stitches, you should still have the same stitch count. I believe we stopped at 30 stitches around. I think that was our, how big we made it, but we'll see. Hi to the chat. Yes, 3 p.m. here, that is Pacific Standard Time, but I know that is not the same time at all the way across the world. So some people, it is a little late for them and they're heading out. So thanks for joining, Storm. I'll see you maybe next week. Oh, actually, we're not doing a live stream next week. I'll see you the week after that. So I'm just still working my way around. And see how it's creating this nice little border? That, isn't that clean? Looks so nice. We're gonna be using that for our drippy edge uh, in our next round. This would be, I think we're currently on round, let's see if we did one, two, three, four, five, six. This is round seven. And I'm gonna call this round seven A. And the reason we're gonna call it round seven A is because we're gonna come back with our pink yarn for round 7B, and it's kind of not technically the same round. So let's see how it goes. So we're gonna get to the end of this round right here. Almost there. Okay, now is gonna be a nice tricky part. We're gonna pull this loop out and we're gonna continue on to round 7B. We're gonna take our pink yarn that we've had on our shoulder right here. And we're gonna start by making a slip knot with this yarn. Uh, we did a slip knot in the very beginning, but again, if you need a reminder, you make a little loop, fold that loop over, and pull it from the inside like that. Okay, so now we have this little loop. Now we wanna take our crochet hook and we're gonna figure this out. We're gonna start by going, pulling through First loop or the last loop? First loop or the last loop? 
Let's go with this loop. We're gonna go through the very first loop that you, uh, the very first front loop that you, is unused from our round uh, six. So this is gonna be right here. So we're gonna go with our crochet hook in through the front of this first loop, take our yarn, place it onto the crochet hook and we're gonna pull it slightly tighter and then just pull it through like that, just like that. Now we're gonna yarn over and do a chain like that. Okay. All right, so for this next round, we're gonna be working into the front loops only and we're gonna be making the drippy edge. The first drippy edge is not gonna be a repeat and then we'll start doing the repeat after that. Uh, I know that doesn't make much sense, but I'm designing on the fly. So you'll get what I mean in a sec. We're gonna start by single crocheting into the same stitch that you just uh, pulled through. So into this exact same stitch right here with a crochet hook, we'll do one single crochet. We can leave this last loop nice and loose and just out. We'll fix it at the end of this round. Okay, so single crochet one into the first stitch. And you know what? Let's do another single crochet into the next stitch as well. So we'll do two single crochets into the front loops only. And then we'll do a half double crochet into the stitch after that. For a half double crochet, we're going to yarn over, then go into the next front loop. That's gonna be right there, just like that. Yarn over again and pull it through. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. One, two, and three for a half double crochet. The idea here is we're current, trying to create a little bit of height and then we're gonna pull it back down to make a drippy little edge. Okay, so we got two single crochets, half double crochet. Next, we want a single crochet into the next stitch right here. Like that. And then the last one, uh, the next stitch we want to do a slip stitch so we're going to go into the next stitch right here yarn over pull it through and then pull it through the loop on the hook okay so that's going to be the first part now for the next uh, for the rest of this round we want to do i think five repeats five repeats of the same repeat the repeat's going to be slip stitch one single crochet one half double crochet one single crochet one slip stitch one and then we're going to do that five times all the way around five more times. So we're gonna start that with slip stitch one, it's in the next stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, so we yarn over, go into the next one. See how I'm bending it too? It helps me get into that little edge. I'm bending it so that the edge is just the thing that's sticking right over. Half double crochet, and then we'll do, go single crochet, and then slip stitch. I think that's what I said. Yeah, look at that. That'll create a little bit of a gooey edge. I think that'll work. All right, let's try it again. That was our first repeat. We want five of those repeats. So we slip stitch one, single crochet, then half double crochet, then single crochet, and slip stitch one. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think that'll look good. Yeah, that'll look good. Okay, keep going. Slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, single crochet, and then slip stitch. If you wanted to make your donut bigger, you would have more stitches in this round, which would mean that you'd have to do your drippy edge a little bit different. Um, let's say for example you did another round up and your stitch count was 36 stitches around so you had 36 stitches to work around instead of 30 stitches which is what we have for that instead of doing the repeat being a slip stitch single crochet half double crochet single crochet slip stitch like we're doing right now you would have to do an extra stitch in there so maybe you do slip stitch single crochet half double crochet then another half double crochet and then single crochet slip stitch does that make sense Chat, let me know. If you have any questions whatsoever as I'm going here, let me know. Uh, I'm more than happy to help out. Yes, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Rachel's in the chat, and she asked what we're making. We're making a donut. We're actually designing a donut live. So let's hope it goes well. Okay, so I'm at my last stitch. This is going to be our last slip stitch here for our last repeat. And what we want to do now is we, we, I know this is gonna be scary, but we're gonna cut the yarn. 
like that. Cut our pink yarn. We're gonna pull it all the way through and then we're gonna take our needle and thread that end that we just cut. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find that first single crochet that we made. That's gonna be right here. And we're gonna go through the back of that single crochet. We're making a hidden end so you can't see it end. Back through the back of that single crochet, like that. And then where this loop is coming out, like that, we wanna go back right into the center of that, like this. And then I'm just gonna have it go in on the inside. And we're gonna pull that first one tight before going through. Then we're gonna go through like that, pull it somewhat tight, like so. Okay, next, we're gonna take this other tail end, and this is from the beginning. See how it's like on the outside of our piece? We're gonna thread that on our needle. that and then we're gonna take it and go straight through we can go right through where we went with the other end so just right through this next stitch on our piece okay now let's take a look at what we got here you know what I think that's a night that's a good amount of ooze we might have wanted to make it a little bit bigger but you know what I think it works I think it works okay so now we're gonna take our crochet hook we got a million loops in here, but don't worry about that. We're gonna start with taking our pink yarn and we're gonna fold it over to get it a little organ more organized. We're gonna take this, actually, you know what? We're gonna take our stitch marker and fold it up first, like that, to get it out of the way. Get our crochet hook into our loop from uh, 7A. And we're gonna continue on to round eight and for round eight, we're gonna be working with our beige yarn and working into all the beige stitches. We're gonna completely ignore this frill, frill. In fact, we're gonna, I can even like tuck it out like this, get it out of the way. Give us a little bit more of a cupcake look. And we're just gonna work our single crochets around with this beige yarn into our beige stitches. But you wanna work for our first few stitches, we wanna work uh, around these two pink ends from our, uh, seven round seven B so we're gonna go into our next stitch right here I'm ignoring our stitch marker but I'm putting our yarn from 7b over the hook so I crochet around it for just a few stitches so there's one single crochet and we'll go into this next one for two like that pull it somewhat tight and then uh, you know I'm not even gonna I'm just gonna cut it like that and we're gonna put it to the side and we'll keep single crocheting around with our uh, our beige yarn. There's one. Okay, this should, I think this is gonna work, guys. I really do. I really do. I hope so, at least. Yes, the blue yarn is the stitch marker. Thanks, Nicole, for pointing that out. Blue yarn is just there to keep track of where the ends of the rounds are. Okay. Coming to the end of the round now. Oh my gosh, we got a tip. I totally missed it. Quick shout out to Planet O Mars who tipped like 24 minutes ago. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And I'm sorry that I didn't see it earlier. Actually, it looks like maybe they tipped twice. Oh, you did! Planet O Mars, I really appreciate that. Thank you for your support. Okay, so we're almost at the end of our round here. And let's see, is this gonna be, the question is, is this gonna be a thick enough Uh, donut part, I don't know, away from the frosting, basically. I, I want the frosting to have a little bit of room for to show itself off. So I think this will go in like that. This will go in like that, right? You know, I think that's enough frost. Or I think that's enough. I could do another round of this to make it a little bit more, you know, donut. Uh, to make it a little taller wouldn't be a big deal it'd be pretty easy to do but uh 
I like more frosting than donut on my donuts. So we're gonna we're gonna continue on and start decreasing it now. Pull our stitch marker up. Uh, I'm also gonna pull this tail end through the very center. So what I'm gonna do with this very last tail end here is I'm just gonna take it and we're gonna go with our crochet hook into the inside like that. I'm just gonna yarn over with this tail end of pink yarn from the very beginning and just pull it all the way through. We'll use this for sewing it in uh, together at the end of the, the donut. Okay, let's pull our stitch marker tighter. Okay, so now we're on to round, I think we're on to round nine. Let me know if I'm off on that, uh, but I'm pretty sure we're on to round nine. And for this round, we wanna start decreasing it down. So we wanna do the opposite of when we were increasing it up. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. To do that, we're going to do three single crochets and then an invisible decrease. And then we'll repeat that process six times, which will take us down from 30 stitches down to 24 stitches around. I think I did that right. I really think I did. First, if I got that right first try, you know, that's, you know, I'm basically a mathematical genius. All right, three single crochets. One, two, three. And then we're gonna do an invisible decrease. For an invisible decrease, if you don't know how, I do have a video tutorial that'll teach you, but just in case you don't wanna to go skip over to that, all you need to do is take a crochet hook and go into the front loops only of the next two stitches simultaneously and then do a single crochet. You might remember the front loops only from the, our frill. That's how we did this pink yarn. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna take our crochet hook. The easiest way to do this is go straight from the bottom like this and poke it, boop, straight up through that front loop only. So there's one front loop and then you spin your crochet hook around, get it into line with the second front loop and then just boop up through the second front loop. Okay, once you're into those two front loops, Yarn over and pull it through those two front loops to do a single crochet. The easiest way to do that is with a, a scoop. So we yarn over and do a scoop. We wanna really scoop it through like that and then yarn over and pull through two. And that is an invisible decrease. If you never made one before, there's your quick tutorial. So for this round, we wanna do uh, keep doing this repeat. Three single crochets and then an invisible decrease six times total. So let's do it again. One, two, three, and then an invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. All right, see you later, Chonk the Axolotl. We got someone in the chat named Chonk the Axolotl and they're heading out. Thanks for joining. Okay, we're gonna keep doing this repeat. I'm on my third repeat here, three single crochets, tickle on my nose, and then <laughs> invisible decrease. One, two, three, invisible decrease. All right, scoops, yep, that's right. Crafty kittens, you can't forget about the scoops. It's important knowledge to have. Okay, just a, I think we're on our last, yeah, last repeat here, one, two, oops, three, and then our last decrease. Front loop, front loop, scoopity boop. There we go. It's gonna be the end of round. <sighs> I lost count, I think we're off. I think we did round, I think that was round nine. Let's count. Wait, 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 wait. This was seven A, that would be eight, nine. Okay, so we're on round 10 then. Pull our stitch marker up, keep track of our end of our rounds. And now we're on to round 10. You might be able to catch on what we're doing now because now we want to keep decreasing it down to get to 12 stitches around. That's our goal. We're currently at 24. We need to decrease it down to get to 12. Uh, this round, we're gonna do two single crochets and then an invisible decrease uh, repeated six times around to go from 24 down to 18. So that'll be the second to our last uh, round of decreases. So two single crochets, one, two, and then invisible decrease. We'll go front loop and front loop, and then single crochet. And then we're gonna repeat that six times around. Pretty easy, pretty easy. I agree, Jay thinks that we should do a crocheted cupcake uh, 
And I think we're basically almost there, you know? I think we could easily do a crocheted cupcake using, uh, at least using this drippy frill part and stuff like that. So we'll have to figure that out. I think that would be very fun. Two, and then decrease down. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. Two, and then decrease it. One, two, and this is gonna be our last decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. All right. Looking pretty good. Okay, now we have uh, our last round of decreasing. I don't, I think we wanna do another round after this, but we're on our last round of actually decreasing it now. Um, this is probably, by the way, a good chance for you to add your face. So if you wanna add a face to your piece, now is probably the best time to do it. I'm not adding our face to this one because it's our first time designing it. So I don't really wanna go, you know, too crazy. Um, but uh, after making this one with uh, the chat, we'll probably make another one that's got a face on it. For this almost last round, not last round, but almost last round, we're gonna do a single crochet into the first stitch, one single crochet, and then an invisible decrease into the next stitch. I also worked around our stitch marker to keep track. So single crochet in the first one, invisible decrease into the next one, like that. And we're gonna repeat that six times around. Single crochet, invisible decrease. Let's do it again. Single crochet one, invisible decrease one. Like that. Single crochet one, invisible decrease one. This next part is gonna be tricky. Single crochet one, invisible decrease one. I'm just thinking about sewing it together and how we're gonna do that. We are gonna figure it out though. We're gonna figure it out single crochet one, invisible decrease one. This is fun, you know, it's very challenging to try to do an impromptu crochet pattern, but I mean, so far I think it's gonna work, hopefully. Okay, all right, so that'll be the end of that round. Uh, and next will be our very last round. Uh, we'll pull our stitch marker up, even though we kind of don't need it that much, but that's okay, you know. Uh, this last round, we just want to do one single crochet into every stitch around, and you should have 12 stitches around. So it's a good last chance for you to count your stitches. So we'll just do a single crochet into every stitch around, and you should have 12 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine. Oh yeah, we got it guys. 10, 11. I love it when everything works out like that. And then last one right here is gonna be 12. Okay, now to finish this up, I don't think we need to chain one. I think all we need to do is cut the yarn. Uh, we probably want a somewhat long end. Like, let's go like that long. And we'll just pull it all the way through. Uh, we also want to get rid of our stitch marker. We don't really need it anymore. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull our stitch marker out and out like that. It did leave a few like kind of noticeable gaps, but that's fine. Okay, so the last thing we wanna do is we wanna put this part and we wanna tuck it inside like this. So we're gonna flip it inside out like that. And then this part, we're gonna tuck in like that. And then we're gonna sew this to this and then we'll have a donut. Look at that, I think it's gonna work. I think it'll work. The tricky part here is gonna be the stuffing it, uh, cause we're gonna have to stuff it as we go. The first thing we wanna do though is, let's start by just doing one, we'll thread it onto our needle like this, and we'll just do one stitch and then we'll, we'll um, stuff it a little bit. So I think how we'll do this is we'll go, let's go ahead and go through the center like this first, and then on the opposite side, we'll find our first stitch here. Let's 
Let's go with like this. Let's go with this one right here. I think that's our first loop. So we're gonna see all these little chains around. We're gonna sew it onto those ones. So we're gonna go into our first one there. And then on the opposite side, we'll go through our last single crochet that we made. So that'll be right there like that. See, that's our last single crochet. So we'll go out from that one and we'll pull it tight. And then we'll go in through the center. Let's do two of these and then we'll stuff it into the center. We'll go through our next chain, which is going to be this one. And then we'll go through our next stitch, which I believe is going to be that one. See, because that was our last one. So this is be our next one. I'm going through both loops, by the way. Like that. Okay. So we got a few sewn on there. Now let's start stuffing it a little bit as we go. Just because it's going to be really hard to stuff it later. I know. I know it. So I think what we'll do is we'll just go through the center here. We want to really make sure that everything's stuffed in. So I'm going to start from over here. I'm going to put the stuffing in and kind of like tuck it in like that. I'm going to tuck it under where our pieces are sewn in. And we'll just keep doing that all the way around. And uh, yeah, we'll try not to overstuff it so that we can still see our stitches. But we want a little bit of stuffing. I think it'll work. If this were, I mean, come on guys, like right, uh, pretty, I'm pretty proud of this already. <laughs> it's looking pretty good. Might not be perfect, but you know what? It's a simple donut with a very limited amount of sewing. That's kind of not that bad. Okay, how many more do we need here? How much more? This whole top area has no stuffing. Oh, thank you so much, Cooper. Cooper just sent the pattern over. So we'll get onto the website ASAP. The stitch there. Looks like we need just a very, very small amount of stuffing right, right there. And then we'll finish sewing it together. Okay. I think that'll work. All right. So let's keep stuff there. Let's keep sewing it closed. Um, I believe the trick was we go through the center. We go into the next stitch along the edge, which will be kind of hard to see with that stuffing now, but I think it's going to be this one. So yeah, I think it'll be this one. And then on the other side, we're going to have to pluck out stuffing at the end because we probably should have stuffed it later. This looks like it's the next stitch across on the piece. So we're gonna come out through that one and pull it tight. And then we'll go through the center and we'll just keep doing that. Next stitch looks like this one. Across will be this stitch right there. Looks like it's working. Through the center. Ah. I'm keeping track of where my last stitch was by just like not looking away from it. So that's going to be the next one. And on the other side, it'll be this one. I can tell it's going to be this stitch that we're coming out of because this is where this end is coming out of. So, or the, you know, you get what I'm saying. In through the center. Oops. Center. Okay, so that was the last stitch. So this is going to be the next one. And on the opposite side, it's going to be. I mean, I see where it's going to be, but there it goes, right there. Through the center. Ooh, we're losing our yarn though. There we go. Okay, it 
looks like we're coming close-ish to the end. So, if, where was that last one? Is this one? Yes, okay, so this stitch. And then the opposite side will be right there. It's gonna be a very, very cute donut. Look, the drip, I think the drip works. It could be a little bit more drippy, but I think it works. It's gonna look really nice when we put the sprinkles on. Okay. Next stitch. And then on the opposite side, right there. Back through the center. Almost done. I'm sure this is gonna be the hardest part of the pattern. How's this going, by the way, in the chat? Let me know how, what you think. I think this is a pretty solid start. Oh, looks like it's this stitch right here. This sewing part is maybe a little trickier than I wish it was, but as far as like a impromptu pattern goes, like this ain't that bad. Like I said, I made a donut like I think eight, nine years ago, like a really long time ago. So it's been a long time for me. <laughs> Can you hear my cat? My cat wants to hang out. I think this is gonna be our last stitch right here. And then we'll go through, looks like we're gonna go through this one right here. Looks pretty good. And then here's gonna be the trick. We're gonna go through the center and this is how we're gonna sew it closed. You probably could have stuffed it a little bit more actually, but it's kind of too late for that. We're gonna go through uh, this stitch right here because we want to, and then we're gonna go in and then out through where this tail end is. This is from the very beginning of our piece. Out through that same tail end, and that way we have something to double knot it to. So we'll go one and two. We'll cut it pretty close, like right like that. And then we'll stuff this in and then get rid of all this extra stuffing that is sticking out. Yeah, I do wish I stuffed it a little bit more, but whatever, what are you gonna do? That's good, all right. That's pretty good. The stuffing's still poking out a little bit more than I want sucks because I gotta pull some of the stuffing out. I guess we could stuff the stuffing. That makes sense. Okay. All right, so the donut part itself is crocheted. Not too bad, I gotta say. Pretty good, pretty good, but it's missing its sprinkles. I think we all can agree on that. But as far as the shaping goes, I think it's pretty good. All right, let's add some sprinkles. Let's start with uh, let's start with white sprinkles. So I got these little bits put together. You don't really need too much. I don't think we're gonna need too much of this yarn. So I have like maybe two or three feet here. Thread that on our needle. And this part should be pretty easy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come out through the bottom somewhere and then come out through the top somewhere. And then we'll just randomly start adding sprinkles. So I'm just gonna go like a couple rounds over, maybe like right there, and then come out somewhere random on the side. And I'm just gonna keep working my way around it and randomly making the sprinkles like shaped in different directions. So like, we'll go this way, we'll make a straight sprinkle, and then we'll come out through this side and make a sprinkle closer to the inside of the piece. So you can kind of see how it's like or just randomly putting sprinkles. And it might look strange as you go, um, but once we have all of our sprinkles on, I'm telling you, it's probably gonna, hopefully, gonna look really good. We'll see though. Like that. And then we'll go a couple stitches over and out through, I don't know, right here. Yeah, 
Yeah, and then a couple stitches over. And then out through right here. This is gonna be our last white sprinkle. It's just a few. We'll go down to here. And then I'm gonna come out through where our first tail end is. See, so even this was too much yarn. We didn't even need that much yarn. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And now we'll just double knot these two ends together. By the way, uh, pink frosted donuts are one of my favorite donuts, but my big favorite, maple, uh, maple logs, whatever they're called. Maple, I should know. I worked at a donut shop for like a year. That was my first job I worked at a donut shop and I ate one of these maple donuts literally this morning. So I should really know it. Maple, maple bar, maple bar. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> All right, next let's do uh, yellow sprinkles. And we'll do the same thing. We're just gonna come out through the bottom, up through the top and just keep randomizing it. <laughs> Crafty Kitten says that they have a really hard time randomizing details. Yeah, I don't know what to tell ya. You gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, the trick for randomizing is not really randomizing it. You know, like, you wanna do, you want it somewhat randomized, but you want it more just like visually looking good. Come up to there. Like I don't really want, if I wanted it really random, we might end up with some some sprinkles that look exactly the same right next to each other. That's not what we want. We just want them to be spread out relatively, like sporadically. I do wish I added more stuffing, but whatever. Whatever, I didn't. Get over it, Lou. Pretty good. Let's go straight down. Uh, and this will be, the, actually, yeah, this looks like a good last bit for yellow. I think that's enough yellow. Only a few, but that's okay. It's a tiny donut. You can only add so many sprinkles on a tiny little donut like this. All right, we'll double knot these together. And chat, what do you think? We're gonna do red sprinkles, but do you think we should also add green sprinkles? Or I think we might be good at red. It looks like we don't want too many colors. And green is like the only color that's not really, doesn't really fit with the rest of these. But I don't know, what do you think? Do you think we should add green sprinkles? Might be good, might be good. Okay. Well, we're definitely gonna do red. Where am I from? I'm from Southern California. <laughs> the Amaze Feed is crocheting a donut right now and said they might have went a little too wild on the sprinkles. That's funny. I feel like that can't be done, you know? Sprinkles are supposed to be wild. Get a little crazy. All right, we're gonna go through there and I don't know, we'll go right here. It's pretty filled in. I don't know if we wanna add green sprinkles or not. And this one will go, let's make this one, yeah, we'll do diagonally up like this. And then we'll out, let's go out right here. And we'll go a couple stitches over, just go right here. And then we'll go out, let's go out here. No to the green, I think that's what G is saying. I, I, I'm inclined to agree, I don't think we need green, but we'll see. All right, we need a few more of these red sprinkles to really even it out. I know we want one here. And one, I think one right here would be good. Maybe like right like this. Ooh, blue sprinkles. 
That might work. Let's do this last red sprinkle right here. And double knot it to right there. I think that's pretty good. On sprinkles. Not. All right. Yeah, I don't think we need any more. Just because I don't, I don't want to accidentally mess up like uh, <laughs> like the amaze feed in the chat and go too wild on the sprinkles. So let's not go too wild on the sprinkles. It looks so cute already. I don't think we need to add anything else. I'm just gonna get all this excess stuffing that's just like poked on through from when we add sprinkles and clean our workbench here but i think that's gonna be it on the donut we'll look at it from all the directions here pretty cute not bad for like a impromptu pattern not not too shabby. I'm pretty proud of that. All right, cool. Okay. All right, thanks for sticking through that with us live stream. Uh, now, I'll do the intro and outro for this video later so that uh, I, and then I'll edit this video together so that it'll be intro, outro, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I can do like left-handed video and stuff like that as well. Uh, now, I want to ask you guys a question. First off, thank you so much for sticking uh, and just like hanging out with me. Now is our question where do we want to do another design for a donut or do we want to do a much larger or another donut that's more customized? That's your question. I'm going to ask you in via a poll so you can let me know which, how you want to go about this. Let's see, how do I add a poll? Got to unpin that I think. Add a poll. Okay, great. What should we make next? A maple bar donut. Another sprinkle donut. Or a different food entirely. Okay, chat, you're up. Let me know what you want me to make next. I'm inclined to make another sprinkle donut and just like so we can hang out with the chat. But if you want a different pattern, if you want a you know, this is your chance. You can, we can do whatever you want me to make. A long John donut. I don't know that. I don't know what that means at all. I also put a different food entirely as one of the options, which might have been a bad decision. But <laughs> we're gonna do what we're gonna do. I think it's a pretty cute donut, though. As far as like a, I don't know. As far as an impromptu pattern goes, that needs like almost no sewing at all. That's pretty good. Thank you so much, Samantha. Ooh. My, t my tea is just getting cold, so I'm trying to down it before it's too late. A different food is winning. How much are we winning by? All right, it's got 35 votes. I mean, it's it's winning pretty handedly though. Okay, so as far as different foods go, we'll, we'll let the chat choose that one as well. I'm thinking we either go with something Thanksgiving related, so we do like a turkey leg, or uh, we choose something else. We do a carrot, I mean, we I put a vote out for a carrot, a turkey leg, or an a, a fried egg. 
I honestly think any of those would work really well. A hamburger. I have made a hamburger before, but that is a little too detailed for this live stream. Um, just because, like, I'll need to make a bun, a lettuce, tomato, the meat, cheese. Like, it's just, there's a lot of things you got to crochet for that. So I think I'd like to make something a little easier that's maybe a little smaller. And uh, we could finish in this live stream, and I won't have to be up till uh, midnight doing all the other work I have to do today. <laughs> Ice cream. That might be good. Cotton candy, a cupcake. Okay, 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 okay. Let's do another vote. We've agreed we're doing a different food entirely, but what food will it be? Let's go. We're going to go with... Okay, okay. But what food? Your choices are between a turkey leg. I just think that makes a lot of sense. A, I like I like the cupcake. Uh, ice cream cone, we could do that. Or, let's see, what's another one that's somewhat simple? Uh, oh, an egg, a fried egg. Did I spell fried wrong? How do we spell fry? Fried egg, F-R-I-E-D, right? I think that's right. Whatever, we'll find out. I might have spelled it wrong because I'm a goofball, but that's fine. Okay, what food do you want me to make now? Ooh, pumpkin pie would have been good too, A-J-I-C. That would have been good, but I already actually have a pie pattern, so. We're not making a Pop-Tart, G. Sorry, too little, too late. Pop-Tart would be good, but we're not making a Pop-Tart. No, hey, hey, don't, uh, <laughs> don't fill the chat too much. Why didn't the vote go through? Oh, it did. There it is. Ooh, it is a close vote right now. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see what we're making. Turkey lay Ice cream cone and fried egg are tied, basically. Okay, I'm gonna get the yarn for a fried egg prepped, just in case. Because it looks like maybe it's that. I mean, we're gonna use yellow and white, doy. And we actually might use a little bit of this, this like light yellow to add a highlight to the fried egg if we end up doing that. How's the vote going so far though? Oh, now ice cream cone is winning. Okay, fo so for an ice cream cone, well, we're gonna need our beige yarn that we just were using. So we're gonna need this for the the cone part. What flavor of ice cream do we do? Probably strawberry. Gee, you gotta watch it, bub. <laughs> oh, never mind. okay. Oh boy, it is a close call here. We're at 41 votes. I'll wait till it gets to... Oh wow, the votes are going up so fast. It is such a close race between fried egg and ice cream cone. Oh my gosh. Oh, turkey leg's coming back. Okay, okay, we'll go to 50. We'll go to 50 votes. If Once we get to 50 votes, we're calling it though. So five more, four more votes. It is a tied race between ice cream cone and fried egg. Turkey leg coming up close in the back. And, and coming up fast. Coming around the bend. Oh, it's fried egg. Fried egg's taking the lead. Three more votes to go. That's my, that's a, that's the closest I got to someone that's like doing a race. Okay, I think fried egg's got it. I don't know if ice cream cone can beat it. 33% for fried egg, 29% for an ice cream cone. Dum, dum, pa. We got one more vote. One more vote. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be fried egg, but one more vote. Egg. Fish and chips. Oh my God, it's tied though. It's tied. Oh, never mind. it's fried egg. <laughs> It was tied on 50 though. All right, ending the poll. 
Thank you everybody for voting. Good choices all around. We're making a fried egg. We're making a fried egg. Okay, do we do this as like another pattern? I think we should, right? I mean, we might as well. We're in the process anyhow, right? Okay, so should I do my, I'll do my intro again so that way we can make it as another video. Okay. Ready? Are you guys ready? By the way, thanks again for joining everybody. Oh, like this video. If this video gets 300 likes, by the way, I'll do a, uh, a giveaway next live stream. I don't think it's gonna get 300 likes though. We're only at 91, so I don't think it'll get 300. But please like this video if you haven't yet already. Okay, so for this pattern, you're gonna need the following materials. You only really need two colors of yarn. We're gonna use yellow, that's gonna be for the center of the egg, and white is gonna be for the outside of the egg. Actually, you know what? We should probably use like an off-white. That way it's not too like, wow, 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 you know? Do I have off-white though? Let's see. Hold on, let me grab my off-white yarn. It's over here. There we go. Okay, let's start this again. Because I think this is just a little bit nicer on the eyes. Okay, so for this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. I'm using all worsted weight yarn, 100% cotton, as I like to do for my amigurumi. And for this pattern, you're just gonna need two colors. We're gonna be using yellow and white. I'm gonna be using an off-white because it's a little bit easier on the eyes. And also, I just think it'll look better. Uh, I like using 100% cotton, but you can use any kind of yarn that you want. The size crochet hook we're using, we're using a size G, four millimeter crochet hook. And you'll need a pair of scissors, a darning needle. I don't know how much we're gonna need their darning needle. I think we can make this whole pattern and just make it sewn closed with the darning needle, but we'll see. We're, we're impro improvising this pattern, so we'll see how it goes. Um, and then of course you need a pair of scissors that don't have a paint, some paint on it. All right. Okay, so let's get started. We are gonna start by using our yellow yarn. We're gonna create the center of our piece of our egg first. This pattern is gonna be pretty, I think pretty straightforward. Um, obviously, like I said before, we're, we're making this up as we go. And hello to the chat. We're, we're going out two patterns in one live stream, wow. Boy, wild, we wild. All right, we're gonna start with the magic loop. If you need a help with the magic loop, actually let's go through the tutorial really quick for how to do the magic loop, just in case you never made one before. To make the magic loop, we're gonna hold the yarn straight down like this, hold it down with our middle and thumb, and then fold it over our index finger like that, back around the middle finger, and then back around the index finger again, creating an X on the front, go, on the back, go around the back, and now you should have two parallel lines on the back and an X on the front. Take the tail end from the yarn and the tail end from the beginning, place it in between your ring and pinky finger, and then close it in like that. That's gonna keep everything held into place as we make our first stitches here. Okay, you wanna hold it backwards so that the, uh, the two parallel lines are facing you and take your crochet hook. We're gonna go under that first bar, yarn over the second one, pull that first one under, and make a loop like that to create a little loop on your crochet hook. Now we're gonna go over that first bar, yarn over with that second one like this, and then we're gonna pull that second one through the first one to create a chain, which will lock the yarn into place. See how I really scooped it in like that? Helps us keep it locked into place. Okay, so now you can pull it off your finger. It should be locked into place if you need extra help on magic loops. I do have a video tutorial for that. That's really helpful. Um, you can find it at clubcrochet.com slash magic loop. Okay. For round one of our fried egg, we are going to work six single crochets into the center of this magic loop. Pretty straightforward. If you made amigurumi before, that's probably how you've started. If you've never made amigurumi before, first you want to do a single crochet. So for a single crochet, we're going to go into the center of the magic loop or into the stitch. Let's go ahead. Let's give it a zoom in a little bit here so we can get a little bit more detail. There we go. So we're gonna go into the magic loop, 
yarn over with the end attached to the ball and pull it under the stitch. And then going over the stitch, we're gonna yarn over and pull through two loops to finish the single crochet. This pattern is gonna be made almost entirely with this stitch, so get used to it. Okay, I'm gonna pull my loop just a little tighter to make it just a little tighter there. Now I'm gonna do six of those single crochets into the center of this loop. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and there will be our six single crochet. And now uh, before we pull it tight, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of yarn in a different color. We're gonna use our red that we used when we were designing our donut, which we just designed. And we're gonna take this, and I'm just gonna pull it straight through the center of that magic loop like this. And then we're gonna use this to keep track of where the ends of the rounds are. Once you have it into the center, we can pull this tail end from the yellow, and it should pull our magic loop nice and tight like that around that red yarn. And we can take our yellow yarn, or red yarn, fold it over like that to keep track. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of round one. And hello to the chat uh, again. We're gonna be teaching this, so I'm not gonna be able to pay attention too much to the chat, but I will be as we get going. There's gonna be easy rounds, so I'll be there soon. <laughs> All right. So for round two, we're gonna do an increase into every stitch around that we made in our first round. The idea here is we wanna make the egg at least like probably like that big. We're gonna have a chance to make it as big of a fried egg or as little of a fried egg as we want. Um, I'm gonna try to make it pretty simple to make it bigger and larger, or larger and smaller, but we'll see how it goes. We wanna find our first single crochet that we made. That's gonna be right, Ooh, if I can get in the lamp stitch, right like, right like this. We want to make sure that we're under both of those loops simultaneously. Let me turn the f-stop down just a little bit because it looks like they kind of hard to see. Oh wait, like that. Yeah, I think that'll help with seeing the stitches. But let me know. But I think that helps. Okay, so we want to find our first stitch right there, and we want to do an increase into all the stitches around. As we go, we want to work around this tail end for just a few stitches, just to keep it locked into pro. Uh, Lock, locked into place. Blah, 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 blah. So we're gonna find our first stitch right here, like that, and do an increase into that stitch. So we'll go one, and two into that stitch. So an increase just means two single crochets into the exact same stitch. One, two, pretty easy. We're gonna keep doing that all the way around uh, to make an increase into each stitch around. So two single crochets in every stitch and that's gonna bring us up from six to 12 stitches around. So this is gonna be our second one. So one and two into that one. All right, that looks pretty good. Keep going around. This is gonna be our third increase. And then here's our next one. One, two, and then our next one right here, one, two and our very last one right here will be one and two into the same stitch that should be 12 stitches around looks like we do have 12 stitches around if you want to count uh count back from where this loop is coming out we go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve that's going to be your first stitch that you made it's pretty good pretty good pretty good all right Put our, our needle down and pull our stitch marker up and we're gonna continue on to round three. It's so fun to impromptu do patterns. This is just a, this is just a fun time. I, I'm enjoying this. I hope you like it. If you do like this video, obviously, uh, especially if you're watching it live. Okay, round three. Let's increase it up one more time. I mean, we could make the egg this small if we wanted to make a little tiny fried egg, but Let's make it just a little bit bigger. We'll have a chance to make it even bigger if we want to later, but for right now, we'll just make it just a little bigger. So we're gonna do a single crochet into our first stitch right here. So we want one single crochet, and then we wanna do an increase after that. So one single crochet, then one increase. So this is gonna be our second stitch right here. And we wanna do two single crochets into that same stitch. So we go 
one and two into that same stitch. So one single crochet, one increase. And then we're just gonna repeat that all the way around. Six times total repeated until it gets to the end of the round, which is gonna bring you up from 12 stitches, which is what you had at the end of round two, up to 18 stitches, which is what we'll have at the end of round three that we're on right now. Sound good? Cool. So one single crochet, one increase. Let's keep going. One single crochet, and then one increase, one and two. Two. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, and we'll just keep repeating that around. And we'll say hi to the chat. Hey, chat. Hey, Ellie. Hey, Jay. How's your Thursday going? Hope you're having a great day. I, what should I do for dinner tonight? Now that we're doing all this food. Ooh, ooh, I, I get to figure out what we're going to do for dinner. Huh. Now I kind of want fried eggs and donuts. It's a weird dinner, but you know. But anybody ever had a fried egg on a donut? Sounds gross, but I would try it. Okay, so we're at the end of our round. <laughs> and uh, that's gonna be the end of round three. Now is your chance, if you wanna make it bigger, easy squeezy. All you need to do is keep doing that repeat, but do an extra single crochet between increases. So for our last round, we did one single crochet and then one increase. If we wanna make it bigger, we'd do two single crochets and then an increase, and we'd repeat that all the way around. And because you did six increases, you'd end up at, uh, instead of 18 stitches, which is what we're at right now, you'd end up at 24 stitches. And then you could do it again. You could do three single crochets and then increase into the to the next round after that, and it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's how you're gonna make your egg as big as you want it to be. At least the center part of it. Then the outside, we're gonna have to do something kind of similar. All right, but I like it this size. I think it's cute, it's very small. We're basically making like a quail egg, which is really cute. So we're gonna do a single crochet into all the stitches around because I like how big this is. So we're just gonna do one single crochet into all the stitches around and this is just gonna give us a little bit of height. You don't need too much height. I think all we'd need is probably like, probably like one round here because eggs are, you know, they're not like that big, the yellow part of the egg. My cat is saying hi in the background. Say hi to the cat. Say hi to Jimbo, everybody. Hi, Jimbo. We'll have him come out at the end of the live stream to say hi. Bye. <laughs> All right. So we're almost done with this round. And this is gonna be our last stitch in the round. And I have 18 stitches around. And I, yeah, I think that is big enough for our egg. Okay, so for this next round, we want to work. Let's kind of do it how we made our donut. We're going to work into the back loops only of all the stitches around, and we're just gonna decrease it down really tight and just basically finish this bottom part of the egg up. We're gonna do, let's do, yeah, we're gonna, let's decrease it down. So we'll, we'll go ahead and pull our stitch marker up here, <clears throat> and we're gonna come back with this, with our white yarn later to make the white on the outside, but I think this will make it easiest and have the least amount of sewing is if we just go and we work into the back loops only to do a single crochet into the first and then a decrease into the next using our yellow yarn. So we're gonna work in the back loops only though. So normally we've been working under both of these loops like that. For this next round, we only wanna work into the back loop. So this one furthest away from us. I think that's a good, I think, I think we got a good idea here because this front loop only we'll use for making the white part of the egg, the egg whites that go around it, we'll work into that front loop only. But for this round, we're just gonna work in the back loop only and we're gonna start decreasing it down. So we'll do one single crochet into the first stitch, working in the back loop only. And then we're gonna do a single crochet two together into the next one, because you can't really do an invisible decrease even though I want to. For a single crochet two together, we're gonna go into the next stitch. Again, we're only working the back loop only and we're gonna yarn over and pull it through like we're doing a single crochet. And then we're gonna go into the next, next stitch. So that was the stitch we just worked into. Next, we wanna go into this stitch with these two loops still on the hook, like that. Yarn over again and pull a second loop through like that. 
and then we can yarn over and pull through all three of these loops simultaneously like that yeah that looks good so we're going to do that all the way around one single crochet one single crochet two together or a decrease if you want to just call it that all the way around and that's going to be <laughs> and that's going to bring us down from 18 stitches down to 12 stitches around so let's do it again we'll go single crochet into the first stitch right here and then single crochet two together into the next one so we're going to go pull through and then the next stitch right here pull a second loop through and yarn over and pull through all of them see so it's going to start pulling it closed in a little bit and you can kind of see how this is going to be the top of the egg and then we're going to do something around the edge let's keep going around single crochet one into the next stitch and then invisible decrease or not invisible decrease single crochet two together into the next ronnie says that they are guilty of putting a fried egg on a donut in the chat uh and uh, honestly it doesn't sound as gross as I think it would be. I mean, well, I don't know. Maybe it would be really nasty. Let me know. Anybody else ever put a fried egg on a donut? And does it taste any good? I can imagine it tasting kind of good. You know? All right, last repeat. Single crochet one. And then single crochet two together one. Okay, pull our yarn out right there. Now is our chance to add a face if we want to. And you know what? We didn't add a face on our donut, but I think we should. Don't you? I think we should. Let's add a face, let's add a face. So I'm gonna grab my safety eyes. Where are they? Here they are. Because it's now or never. And we'll just do a simple one, we'll just do two eyes uh hey bottle of eyes you can buy these it's a great way to support the channel you should do that because it would be nice okay oh i love that takoyaki has a great idea we're gonna put a booty on this egg too but we need a little bit of our black i'm just gonna use black thread instead of black yarn because it'll be easier to add our uh, mouth on like that I'm also gonna take our stitch marker out since our next round is actually our last round. So we don't really need a stitch marker. We can kind of just ignore it. Oopsies. Tap, the, tap that, okay. Eyes. First off, let's add our, actually, you know what? I'm gonna add the smile first and then our eyes so that we know where to put the eyes. I think that would be a good idea. So we'll need our darn, or yeah, we'll need our needle and our thread. We'll just put a yarn in there. Okay, so I'm gonna start by going just into out from one of these stitches on the bottom of our first round. So like something like that, maybe. And then we'll go two stitches over like that. That actually might make a smile. Yeah, that makes, that makes a smile already. I was gonna go through this one and pull it tight so it doesn't pull straight. But honestly, I think it's gonna be a smile without doing even that. So I think that's all we really need to do. It's probably because it's so small, but let's see. If we double knot this and we look at the front, how is it gonna look? There's our questions. One. We can fix it if we don't like it though. And, oh, there we go. Two. Did I drop my scissors? Or am I just a goofball that doesn't remember? Nah, I didn't drop my scissors. Hi, Naughty Flowers. Naughty Flowers is in the chat. Hello. We're making a fried egg right now, and we just finished making a donut. Okay. I'm going to pull this smile down just a little bit to make it more smiley. It's so tiny and cute of a smile, though. Let's add our eyes. I'm just going to add the eyes right next to where the smile is. Like that. And then right next to this side. Maybe like right here. 
Oh my gosh. That is too cute. Oh my god, that's so cute. All right, and then just lock them in the inside. Locked in. And locked in. Okay, and then I'm just taking this tail end. I'm just going to stuff it on the inside to add to our stuffing later on. But that egg is coming together. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Okay, now get our crochet hook back in there and we'll do our last round of crocheting. For our very last round, uh, let's do in our, our last round of yellow crochet because after that we need to make the, uh, we need to make uh, white yarn after that. All right, I mean, we crochet with white yarn. So next up, we're gonna do an invisible decrease into every stitch around. You can do any kind of decrease you want. If you wanna do the single crochet two together like we did in our last round, you totally can do that. I like the invisible decrease because it's so like hidden. I just think it's really good. Uh, and it's a good chance for you to learn a different kind of decrease stitch. For an invisible decrease, all you need to do is work into the front loops only of the next two stitches. So this stitch, and this stitch at the same time, and you just need to do a single crochet into that. Easiest way to do that, I know I've already showed you this, but let's do it again. You just go in through the front loop only and go from the bottom up like that, one, and then flip your yarn hook around to get positioned under the next front loop, and then go boop, right up the second front loop. Now, when you're un in both of those front loops, we yarn over, and pull it through these loops. Easiest way to do that is with the scoop. Never forget the scoop. And then we yarn over and pull through two loops to finish it up. We're gonna do that for every stitch around. So that's the first one. You want six of them total. So we'll do a second one, front loop, front loop, single crochet, front loop, front loop, single, ooh. There we go. Did I do that right? Nope. Let's try that second one again. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. There we go. Couple more. Front loop, front loop, single crochet, and uh, I believe. No, we need a couple more. Single or front loop, front loop. I think we need one more after this. Yeah, this will be the last one. It's really hard to get into those last stitches for the last invisible decrease, but I believe in you. Okay, so that's gonna be all of them. You should have six stitches around now. I'm gonna cut the yarn. Uh, you do not need a very long end here because we're just gonna use it to sew it closed. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead, stuff it, sew it closed, and then we can add the white, egg whites around the outside here. Okay, so first up, let's stuff it. I wanna take the, uh, the stuffing, I'm gonna use the back of my crochet hook here and just stuff it up like this. And I honestly, I think that's enough stuffing. You really don't, I don't think we're gonna need very much because we made the egg so tiny. It's just gonna be a little tiny egg. Just a quail egg. Thread it on our needle. This is how to sew closed. If you haven't sewed closed, this is probably the easiest way to sew it closed. You just take your needle and you wanna go through the front loops only of all the stitches around. So this was the last stitch that you worked through right here, but this is the next one right here. I'm just gonna go into the front of this loop, this front loop, pull it through, and then just keep doing that all the way around six times. So there's one, there's two, three, four, five, six, easy squeezy. Pinch it right at the top and just pull it closed. It closes it up and then go straight through the middle and then out somewhere on the outside like that and pull it tight and we'll cut it close. And we might add a butt 
later on. Okay, so that's the first bit of the of it done. Now we just need to add the egg whites. So let's get our white yarn and get ready. Samantha asks, am I live every Thursday? Almost every Thursday. Next Thursday, we won't be live, um, but we will be live the Thursday after for our birthday. Club Crochet is turning five years old. Oh, it's out of its toddler years. Now it's going to kindergarten. Club Crochet is going to kindergarten. That's what I say. Uh, but yeah, we'll be live next or the Thursday after next at 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Making, we're gonna be making burbs. My favorite thing to make. Okay, so next we're gonna be making the egg whites that go around the outside of the egg. To start, we're gonna make a slip knot. So we're gonna grab our yarn, make a loop, pinch the loop on the inside, twist it like that, grab the inside loop, pinch the tail, and pull it tight like that. Create a little, little uh, slip knot there. Put it down for a second. Take your crochet hook, and we're gonna go into the very first of our front loops that we didn't work into for round one, two, three, four of the egg yellow. So if you look, this stitch right here, see all these edges? That's what we're gonna work into on this next round. You wanna work into that first one right here. We're gonna take your crochet hook into that first one and we're gonna pull our loop through like this. And then we're gonna yarn over and chain one. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna give a little bit of like space. We wanna basically increase it up a little bit further so that the egg whites are bigger than the yellow. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start by single crocheting into the same stitch that you just worked into right here. And actually, let's work around this tail end as we go. We're just gonna do a single crochet into the same stitch that you just pulled through like that. Pull a little tighter. Okay, so that's gonna be the first one. Then we're gonna do another single crochet into the next stitch right here. Again, working around our tail end like that. So we're gonna do two single crochets and then we're gonna do an increase into the stitch after that right here. So it's gonna be right like that. And we're gonna do an increase into that next one. One and two. Now the reason we did two single crochets and then an increase is because we wanna increasing increase it up one more stitch than you did for your last increase for your uh, round. I think we did it in round three. So remember how I was like, you can make this bigger if you want by doing two single crochets and then increase in the next round. If you did that and you made your egg yellow bigger, in this round you're gonna have to do more single crochets to get to that increased stitch that makes it slightly bigger than the last. The easiest way I think to calculate that is probably gonna be uh, do one more single crochet than you did for your largest increase uh, when you were making the egg yellow. Uh, another way might be if you count all your stitches and you divide by six, that might get you how many single crochets to do in between. I don't know. That sounds like a math thing. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so this round, we're gonna keep doing this around. I think that's probably enough for our white yarn, working around the end of the white yarn. So we can just like leave it loose. And we'll keep doing that process all the way around. Two single crochets, one, two, I'm working in that front loop only, and then an increase into the next. That's our second repeat. Keep going around. One, two, and then an increase after that. See, it's making the white around the outside. One, two, and then our increase. And if you're wondering, no, I have never crocheted an egg before. This is actually my first egg I've ever made, and we're making it up on the spot, just like the donut. And you know what? I think it's gonna work out. I think it's gonna work out. Let's see. One, two, and let's do another increase right here. Two more, or I mean one more. One, two, and see how it's going like really low right here? That's gonna be, I'm 
probably should be fine. We'll do an increase into that last stitch right there, like that. And that should be, uh, you should have, if you're making your egg the same size as I am, uh, you should have one, two, three, four, I think you should have 24 stitches now around. Okay, I think we should make it pretty big. I think uh, we probably want to increase out at least like two more rounds. Maybe just one more. Because I think I want the white to be about like that big on it. Let's do, we'll, we'll definitely do one more round of increasing. So that's going to be the end of that round. Let's grab a little bit of our, let's grab our stitch marker here to keep track. Uh, and here, uh, Samantha was in the chat asking about how to add a stitch marker. Pretty easy. You just take the end here and just place it in between the yarn on the hook and then the next stitch and then just ignore it basically. Like hold it into place and just ignore it and crochet around it without it like pretending it's like not even there. Okay. Hi to my dad. My dad is in the chat. Hi dad. Okay. For this next round, we're going to be increasing it up one more time. Uh, so we're going to find that first single crochet that we made. That's going to be right here. It might be a little confusing because of this chain stitch. So just watch out for that and look for the first two loops like that, that are going this way, not the ones that are going this way. Okay. So this is our first one. Get our crochet hook into that first stitch. And we're going to do a single crochet into that first one. For this round, we want to do three single crochets and then an increase repeated all the way around. So let's do three single crochets. One, two, three, and then an increase after that, four and five. All right, we're gonna repeat that six times total, which is gonna bring us up, I think, to 30 stitches around. So one, two, three, and then our increase right here four and five. That'll be our 10th stitch. Yeah. One, two, three, and then an increase. Four, five. One, two, three, four, five, one more, or two more, one, two, three, four, and five. All right, one more repeat there. One, two, three, four, five. All right, that's gonna be the end of, of our repeats. I'm gonna pull my stitch marker up, even though I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the last round we're gonna work into. If you wanted to make the egg whites bigger, um, you just re do another repeat of increasing with one single crochet more between increasing. So for example, the next round would be four single crochets and then an increase. We actually still might do that in this round, We might be able to get away with it without doing it. Let's try to do it with, let's try to do the out, the last round without doing any increasing. I don't know if we'll be able to make it work, but let's try it. The idea for this last round is we want to make it wavy. You know, we want to make it organic and not just like a perfect circle or in our case, like a hexagon. We don't really want that. We want it to be as wavy as we can. So to do that waviness, we want to keep going. We want to basically use single crochets, half double crochets and double crochets around this piece sporadically to get us up to that, to that stitch. You know what I mean? So we're going to go, let's do two single crochets, two half double crochets, two double crochets, and then work our way back down and see where that gets us. So let's start with that. We're going to go two singles, one, two, and then we're gonna do two half double crochets. One, two, like that. 
and then we'll do two double crochets. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't explain a half double crochet. Let's undo those half double crochets. Half double crochet, you wanna yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over again and pull it through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops, one, two, and three. Okay, let's do that half double again. Yarn over, into the stitch, yarn over and pull it through, then yarn over and pull through all three, one, two, and three. Okay. Now we want to do a double crochet. A double crochet is just a little higher than that. We want to yarn over into the next stitch right here, yarn over and pull it through, then yarn over. And this time we only want to pull through two loops, one and two, and then yarn over again and pull through another two, one and two. Okay. Let's do one, two, three, three. let's do another two. Let's do another double crochet, yarn over into the next stitch, pull through, yarn over and pull through two, one, two, and then yarn over and pull through another two, one, two. Okay, so we did single, single, half, half, double, double. Mm, we might wanna do our increasing actually, because this might, yeah, you know what? This is gonna make our, if we don't do our increasing, it's gonna make our piece bigger. So instead, I'm gonna undo that double crochet. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna do that second double crochet into the same stitch that we did our first one into. So we're gonna yarn over, go into that same stitch right here. We're gonna call that a double crochet increase. Okay, so single, single, half, half, and then two double crochets into the same stitch for our first repeat. And then let's do, uh, let's do something a little, for our, for our second part, let's do a half, half, single, single, and then two, and then a an single crochet increase. So we'll go half double crochet twice, two half double crochets. Let's go one, two for our two half double crochets. And then we'll do two single crochets. One, two for our two single crochets. Yeah, okay. And then we'll do we'll do two single crochet, a regular single crochet increase after that. Single crochet increase after that. Okay. And then why don't we just try to do that exact step all the way like three times total. So that's going to be uh the full repeat is going to be three repeats of this, two single crochets, two half double crochets, double crochet increase, and then two half double crochets two single crochets, and then a regular increase. And we're gonna repeat that again. So let's do that repeat again. Two single crochets, one, two. Two half double crochets, one, two. And then a double crochet increase. Yarn over into this stitch, pull through two, two. And then try it again. Yarn over into the same stitch, two, two. Yeah, I think this will work. And then we'll uh, keep doing that repeat. We're doing two half double crochets. One, two, two single crochets. One, two, and then our single crochet increase after that one and two and let's see what kind of that's not bad yeah i think that'll work we can do that one more time i mean if you want to make it more like randomized more like gooey what you could do is is just like sporadically do half double crochets and single crochets so that it's not so like uniform because this will be kind of like a triangle shape that we're making right now and if you want to make it more like you know gooey gooey you would uh, maybe switch that up a little bit. Maybe do slip stitches too. Just go kind of wild with this last round um, with half double crochet, single crochet, slip stitches and double crochets. But um, just make sure that the increases are in the same spots. Okay, uh, last repeat here. Let's try it one more time. Two single crochets two half double crochets, one, two, and then a double crochet increase, 
one double crochet and then another double crochet in the same stitch like that and then uh yeah we'll work our way back down we'll do two half double crochets and then two single crochets one two and then our last one right here is going to be a, an increase into this last stitch one and two okay the very last thing we want to do is we want to do a slip stitch into the next stitch right here so we're going to yarn over pull it through and then pull it through the loop on the hook we'll cut the yarn and pull it through like that next we want to get rid of the stitch marker and then we can just hide this end on the inside thread it on our needle and this is how I like to hide the end. We'll go in through the back of the next stitch right here. And then come down through where this stitch is coming out. So right like that. And then in through the back of a few stitches on the back like that. And then we can pull it a little tighter. We want to mimic the look of these stitches on the edge. Go like that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I like how it gives it a little bit of like another little weird bump at the end at the top. And then we'll just take this end and I, I'll just hide it into a few more stitches on the back like this. And then we can cut both of these ends pretty short. I'm not worried about it coming loose, so we can just cut it nice and short. And then the very last thing that I think would be fun per someone's request is just adding a little butt crack because why not? <laughs> so we're going to thread some black yarn here. And I'm just going to come out, come down through the top of our piece then out through the bottom, like here. And then I'll just go up like down to like right there, maybe wherever. And then come out through the same stitch that this one, I started it like that. Oopsies, messed that up. that on a needle e. I like this song there we go now he's got a little egg butt because why not everything's got a butt even eggs and I know what you're thinking what about the donut you didn't give a butt to the donut didn't I though think about it we're gonna cut this nice and short and then just, I'm just gonna stuff that little end right in there. And now we have a little crocheted egg. Not too shabby for an impromptu pattern, if you ask me. Not too bad. And then go to the side, back. There's our egg. Where's our donut? Here's our donut. And there's our egg on top of our donut. Ah. Okay. All right, guys, there are our two patterns. Pretty good, not too shabby for a little live stream. I'm pretty proud of that. What do you guys think? An egg and a donut. I was really only planning on making one pattern today. So the fact that we got two in is pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Let's zoom this out. Okay, I think that's all my patterns for today. I think that's all the how to crochet I can do in one live stream. But, I don't know. We could still fart around if you wanna. You wanna make another donut? I think it'd be kind of fun. Maybe we could make a chocolate covered donut instead. It's pretty easy to make. What do we think? My dad thinks we should make bacon. Another live stream for bacon. I can't do another. I, I've used all of my brain power 
to come up with two how to crochet patterns in one video, that's pretty wild. I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah, Cooper needs a pattern break too. Thank you, Cooper, I agree. So let's just hang out. Let's just hang out. We'll, I'll do a maple bar another time. I'm pretty happy with this. I don't really wanna think about a pattern. I just kinda wanna make something. So let's go ahead. I'm just gonna make another donut. Let's do a chocolate covered donut. And uh, I think I'm happy with them. Um... Hold on, let me get this out of the way. I think I'm happy with uh, using beige for the, for like a chocolate covered with beige on the bottom. Sounds probably, probably pretty good. Am I doing no shave November? No, I just forgot to shave. <laughs> Oops. Oh yeah, we can make a pie actually because there's a pie pattern. Let's do that. We can, I like that idea, Sunshine. Okay, so we're gonna pull up. Hold on, I gotta pull up my pattern. If you wanna crochet the pie with us, the pattern's already on there. Avocado is in the chat. Hello, Avocado. Wants us to crochet an avocado, but is spamming the chat. So stop spamming the chat and I won't. I. I will crochet an avocado another time. Today I'm, I'm kind of done doing new patterns. So we're gonna go with a pie instead. Hope that's okay. Sorry avocado, but come back soon and I'll do an avocado. Um, we wanna come up with a pie pattern. But I will, I'll do an avocado. I mean an avocado I totally can do a pattern for. That's, that's not that crazy. We'll log in, cause I'm not logged in. And what colors do we need for the pie? We need, we definitely need our beige for the top of the pie. I know we'll need gray. I actually think we just need a little bit of gray too. Actually, I think that's all I need. Yeah, okay, cool. Wait, what's the difference here? Shining beige. Hmm. Okay, I think it's the same. All right, so we're gonna make this pie. I'm not teaching how. Sorry. There's a video on this already. Yes, we already have a pie pattern. You can actually find it at clubcrochet.com slash pie. Avocado's heading out to do it, to crochet another triceratops. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and not teach how to do this and hang out with the chat. Hi. I'm sorry I did so much tutorial work. I really hope you guys didn't mind that that much. I think it was kind of fun. Oh, Leaf Sauce says they, they had a question for me, but I missed it. Hold on, I'll, I'll try to scroll up and find it, but. Oh, quick question. How is Lava Run coming along? Are you working on making a sing it's single player? Leaf Sauce, you're so great. Thank you for asking. I really appreciate it. It's going great. We have new graphics made. So I worked on making, uh, remaking the, um, the board graphics with a, f my, a friend of mine named Dominic is, uh, helps with all the graphic work. So they're helping me uh, redesign the board and they actually just finished it the other day. And I think it looks great. We, I basically, I redesigned the board so that it looks more, it's more clear where you start and it's more clear where you end. And then it's also more clear, uh, like the edges of the board are made with like a, it looks like you're falling off of a cliff, which I think is a, probably a good idea. Samantha, we are making a pie right now. Just a little pie. We made an egg, we made a donut, and now we're making a pie. The pie already has a pattern. So if you wanna learn how, uh, I just put the pattern at clubcrochet.com slash pie. Um, 
the single player question. So Leaf Sauce asked if Lava Run, um, the dinosaur game that I'm working on, if I have a single player yet. I do. Uh, I'll kind of explain it to you. If you've played, if you've tested out my game, by the way, I'm still looking for testers. If you are interested in testing out my Lava Run game, um, I actually don't remember what the link is, but it's something like clubcrochet.com slash Lava Run. Uh, I'm looking for people to help with testing it out. Cooper, you are on fire, man. You're so talented. <laughs> Good at like, you're just quick. Um, the, uh, a single player. Yes, uh, basically how the single, I, I have designed a new mode for single player mode and it's really cool. Oh, oh my, did you hear that? Let's do this one too, ready? No. Mm, that's okay. Um, but yes, I have a single player mode that I'm working on that I'm going to need feedback on. Uh, and I was supposed to, I was supposed to release it for the testers like last week, but I totally messed that up. So that test is coming out soon. What about music? Do I play any instruments? I do. I play a uh, ukulele. Actually, the last live stream I did, I ended the live stream by doing a song um i did a i did a song live on on the live stream you should check it out it was i think i did pretty good i think i did all right um cheryl uh i would test it out is it on android no it's actually a physical game so the idea is it's a you print out a board and you crochet your dinosaurs and then you actually can play a board game with those dinosaurs it's pretty cool. Uh, I I want to turn it into a game eventually, but I don't know how to design uh, games like that. So yeah, I don't really know how to do that yet. Um, okay, we're making a pretty small pie here. I think we should make it bigger. I think we should make it a little bigger. <laughs> Jay. Jay says they want to hear me. Oh, the chat stopped working? Oh, the chat on the screen stopped working. It did. You are right. Thank you for noticing that. Let's see if we can't... Let's see if I can't figure that out. Let's see. Oh, there it goes. Oh! Did I mess it up? Someone say something in the chat. I might have messed it up. Yikes. Might have made it worse. It, it like fixed and then it was like, no. <laughs> say something in the chat. G goes, no, I'm not gonna. Very clever. <laughs> All right, it looks like it's working again. Yeah, I play ukulele. I've written a few songs, but uh, I'm not the best at it. I just It's just like kind of a fun hobby that I do every now and then. All right, I'm making this pie pretty easy. I don't really want to make the berry pie. There's like a way in the pattern for how to make it into like a berry pie and stuff, but I'm just gonna make a simple little regular old pie. Cheryl says that they don't have a printer, so they probably won't be able to test it. Well, you can also try drawing it with a bunch of pieces of paper. It's basically just making a grid. Oh no, never mind. You do need a printer because you need to print out the cards for the game too. So you would need a printer. You could go to like FedEx print and get it printed out, but it might cost a little bit of money. There's like, I think there's like eight pages that you need to get printed, but you could do that way if you wanted to. Okay, now I'm going to do the 
bit around the edge here. We're doing the crust on the pie. Oh, really cool, Sunshine. Sunshine's gonna try the game out. Yeah, please give me feedback. I have the um, the information on where to uh, give me feedback uh, in the the instructions for the game. So please don't forget to give feedback. Not that many people have given me feedback on the game, which is like kind of the point. And uh, so yeah, I'm looking for feedback on Lava Run for sure. You totally could draw the grid and make the cards. That's how I did, and uh, that's how I made the game originally, is I had it all drawn out. And uh, yeah, you totally can. Okay, we're doing, I'm doing the uh, crust around the outside of the pie now. By the way, the chat doesn't like you. Did it freeze up again? Well. Yeah, there's, I, I feel like there's only so much I can do there. Hopefully it'll catch back up. Just about done with the top crust. We'll have to add a face to the pie, obviously. Yeah, I think that's you got a nice big pie. I mean, it's not that big, but big enough for a pie. go all right let's get our gray yarn I this might not be enough gray yarn well what do you think should we play yarn chicken let's play a little yarn chicken I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be enough but you know sometimes you got to take a risk sometimes you gotta take a risk play the game I believe this is our first single crochet. One, two, three, yeah, okay. Bumpkin pie. Have you ever seen the, the grandma that's trying to say pumpkin pie? And she keeps saying pumpkin pie. I want the pancake pie. It's really funny. <laughs> it's like a TikTok. Cooper, what kind of cake is your favorite kind of cake, Cooper? I'm gonna guess. I think Cooper seems like someone that really likes funfetti cake. And I mean that in the biggest compliment ever because that's probably my favorite kind of cake. And Cooper's a fun dude. Seems like a fun Fetty kind of kind of guy. Ooh, red velvet. Ooh, I got you. Got to love a red velvet cake. You have got to. If you don't love red velvet cake, get the heck out of here. Avocados in Oklahoma. Shout out. Where are you at? Don't give us the city. Well, I guess if it's like a big city, you can give us it. Don't give us your like address or anything, though. But shout out where are you live in. Who's the furthest away from where I'm at? I'm in Southern California. Who is living the furthest away from here and watching live right now? I'm curious. Okay, I think I'm on my last. It's going to be the last stitch here there and then we keep going there we go okay there we go all right 
before I keep going, I'm definitely adding a face to this pie. Houston, Texas. Oh, we got Alberta, Canada. Can someone beat Canada? Manchester, UK. That is really far. Slovenia? Okay. Slovenia is pretty far. Croatia? Oh my god. That's super far. I think the furthest... What is... Someone look up. What is the exact, like, furthest away you can get from, like, Los Angeles? That's probably... I'm not in Los Angeles, but that's pretty much the closest you can get to where I'm at. I like to pull stuffing out the top of our guy, so we want to add eyes not where that is. One, two, three. I think those eyes are going to be a little too close together. But we'll see. I lost my yarn. I just threw this black thread on the ground and I can't see it. Oh, because it didn't fall on the ground. Australia is super duper duper far away. I don't know though. Croatia, it seems like Madagascar is the furthest from LA. Whoa. Really? I'd love to go to Madagascar. I studied Madagascar a lot in college because I was addicted to lemurs. Still am. They're the best. I think we're going to try. I like that placement for the smile, but I think I want the eyes a little further away. So let's try it like that. Because we're going to have a little bit of like pie coming out the top of that. Or not steam. We're going to have steam coming out the top. Rebecca's out of eggs for their cake. I guess you need to crochet some. Did it, uh, the chat broke again? Here, I'll just do, do. There it goes. Yeah, the chat's just having trouble, you know? It just, it needs, it needs a little bit of love. That's okay. You know, we all have slow days. Mine are usually Tuesdays. For some reason, Tuesdays for me are my, like, hardest day of the week i just have such a hard time getting out of bed and like staying motivated and just i don't like tuesdays i'm a i'm a big no fan tuesday kind of guy not a fan that's way too no that's not the right spot we're gonna have to go through this stitch instead Nice soft smile. Soft smile. Soft smile as a ooh band name? No. Maybe an album name though. Soft smile. What do you think? Jules came up with such a good band name the other day. Witness. What is it? Witness. Witness Jenny. I think or something witness Sammy. It's witness something. It was really good. Um, I also think we need to give our pie some eyebrows, but uh, maybe we'll give her the eyebrows at the end. I just think it'd be fun. But we can add. We we'll add eyebrows in in a sec. Actually, you know what? No, we're gonna do eyebrows now. Well, it's on, I got eyebrows on the mind. Oh, 
Oh, I think our music ended. It did. There we go. Music ended, that means that we are currently in a very long live stream. But we're almost done. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around and hanging out. If you haven't yet, you know the deal. Please like and subscribe down below. Be great. I mean, if you've been watching this long and you haven't already liked, you know, I don't know what to, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. You know what? I actually, I think this needs to be a thicker eyebrow. I think we'll go out to here. Big eyebrows, big. He looks so kind with that eyebrow. I love that. So I've been hiding amigurumi all over my neighborhood. Just because like I have so much of this amigurumi now because I make it all the time. That's like, what do I do with it all? So what I've been doing is going on daily walks throughout the neighborhood and just hiding uh, hiding amigurumi around. Just because like, eh, it's kind of fun. I think it'd be really fun to hide this amigurumi where like, like this maybe? Let's try this. Oh, oh, he's like, he looks so wholesome. What a wholesome little pie. Um, this one would be funny to hide like, you know, on a window shelf, you know, like they're leaving the window out to cool down. That'd be kind of funny. If I could find a good one. Okay, let's finish crocheting this out. And then we can add the little, add the little hair. That's right, we're gonna add just a little bit of hair, but it's not really gonna be hair, it's gonna be cool whip. One, and then a decrease, I think. No, it's two and then a decrease. Two, then a decrease. Okay. Show us all the amigurumi I've got. I literally couldn't. I'll hold you, I'll hold up a box of it in a sec. One of the many, many boxes of amigurumi that I have around me. I've got hundreds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. go I probably should have done two rounds actually yeah that's a that is a short pie <laughs> we're gonna have to undo that round and do another round of single crochets but that's okay too short Do I leave a note? No, I don't leave a note. I should though. I'll Maybe I'll start leaving a note on the bottom that says like, I don't know, have a great day. I, I hit a hummingbird yesterday at the neighbor's place. I don't know if they're gonna find it or not. I gotta be careful though, because I think it's gonna start raining soon. And if it starts raining, like I gotta just be careful about where I hide the crochet. Kitten mittens. They're in love with that egg. Oh, that's so sweet. Thanks. Short King, yeah. What kind of pie is it? Uh, I was thinking it was an apple pie. 
but I don't know what what kind of pie do you think it is what kind of pie does it seem like feels like it feels like it gives off gives off apple pie vibes because it's got it's got like that sweet wholesomeness to it but maybe it's more like it's not a pecan pie because those are gross Shout out to the pecan pie haters. <laughs> I'm one of them. Not a fan. Maybe it's a berry pie. Uh-oh, we're running out of yarn, guys. Our, our yarn chicken. We might lose. Because I had to do that extra round. Oh, we would have been able to... I would have gotten away with it, too. If it weren't for that stinking round. Crocheting makes you hungry. Me too. Shoot, I was supposed to go on a walk today, but now it's getting so dark so fast. It's only 5.30 and it's like dark out. How annoying is that? That's okay. We're almost done here and then maybe we can get enough time to go on a quick walk. One... And then sharp decrease. We are cutting it really close, you guys. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. Yarn chicken! We might be able to make it! Isn't it funny how... I don't know. If you've ever played yarn chicken before, I feel like every time I play yarn chicken, I have to go quicker at the end. Even though I know like the speed isn't changing anything. <laughs> but it just feels like I have to crochet fast. Like if I crochet faster, maybe I'll get away with it. <sighs> Guys, I need to do six decreases with this much yarn. That is gonna be difficile. We shall win the yarn chicken. Here we go. We need six of these. One. Ooh, we might be able to do it. Two. Three. Oh my gosh. Four. Oh, two more. This is how long I'd leave it cut for sewing it closed. Two more. Here we go. Five. Wait. Two, three, four, five. Wait, did I mess up? One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, I don't know. I messed up somewhere, and I only have one more. So, whatever. I guess we'll deke. I guess we're gonna win because I screwed up my pattern. <laughs> That's one way to win more yarn chicken. Woo! If winning yarn chicken isn't enough for you to like this video, I mean, I'm just saying. Okay. Let's go ahead and stuff this closed. I'm just stuffing a little bit of our extra thread in there as our start of our stuffing. Okay. So I used to live right across the street from the beach in San Francisco. I miss it a lot. But one game we used to play there, we called it um, Tuna. You go and you you go to the edge of the water and you just start wiggling your feet around and then you slowly get buried into the sand. And you have to go close enough to where like the water is just barely hitting your feet because that's where the sand is like the, the, the lightest. And they the water there's so cold so it's like really really cold water and there's little crabs and they start crawling on your feet and then the the waves start getting higher and higher and the further you wiggle your way in the further your legs get down and the game is called tuna because it's chicken of the sea <laughs> and the first one to leave loses or the last one or the one that's deepest and if no one gives up 
but someone always gives up because the honestly it's the bugs and the cold that give that make you give up me and my friend made that up shout out to Emilio somewhere out there okay so when this closed nice tight center and we'll come out we'll just come out right here okay we have one more thing we want to do for this pie and then we can call it and that is to give it a little bit of a hairdo this part I love this part here's what you do you take a little bit of stuffing that's probably enough and you just roll it in your hands like this and you make a little sharp end that and you thread that end which is kind of hard to do but you can thread it onto a needle all those fibers through the end of your needle and then you go up through the bottom of your piece and out through the top like that like this and then you just kind of like open it up a little bit and now he's got a little steam hairdo. Isn't that cute? So cute. Let's pull it out just a little bit more. Like that. And then this excess stuff on the bottom, all you have to do is just cut it. Like that. And then just push it. And now we have a little pie with a little hairdo. Tell me that isn't adorable. Adorable. All right, guys. That's gonna be the end of our food crochet alongs today. Let's give a let's give it a closer look. First, we got our donut that we didn't add a face on. I'm sorry, we should have had a face, but we didn't. Next, we got our egg. Pretty adorable. We're gonna get the patterns for this donut and the egg onto the website ASAP. So uh, yeah, check it on the website. I'll put the. I'll put the donut at clubcrochet.com slash donut, egg at clubcrochet.com slash egg, and I'll get it on as soon as I can. I've got a lot of stuff going on right now, but I'll try as fast as I can. And then we got, of course, our little tiny pie. So cute. Adorable. There we go. Look at that. I'll even set it up all pretty. Oh, how adorable. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, I will see you not next Thursday, but the Thursday after. That's going to be um, November. I think that's November 17th. So November 17th, it's our fifth burb day. So we're going to be crocheting burbs, and uh, it's going to be a pretty big one. We'll probably do a giveaway because it's our birthday. And uh, yeah, you should totally join. Uh, we'll start at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Just make sure to subscribe down below and hit the little bell icon and it'll let you know when I do that live stream. We'll also be coming up with a few uh, more patterns this month too. So, you know, subscribe for that stuff. Big, big shout out to everybody who tipped today. Quick thank you to all of them. And a super big thank you to Cooper. Cooper, thank you so much for all your help today. I really, really appreciate it. Cooper helped us not only moderate the YouTube channel and post links and make sure that people were, you know, behaving themselves, but also they wrote down all of the patterns for the donut and the egg so that we can get it onto the website quicker. So big shout out to Cooper. Thank you so much for your support and your help. Okay, guys, pasta la pizza. Happy hooking. I'll see you next Thursday. And, uh, oh, what else? Oh, I know. Mm, actually, you hang up first. Oh my god. Oh my god. Actually, though, you hang up first. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Maybe actually you could hang up first this time. Oh, oh no. Oh no, I just remembered. Actually, though, maybe you could hang up first this time. That would be pretty cool. Oops, you hang up first. Oops. Oh 
Okay, I'm hanging up now. doop a doop a doo Here I go. Definitely hanging up. Ah, gotcha. I wasn't hanging up. Now I'm gonna hang up. Okay, all right. Bye. Oh shoot, we forgot to show Jimbo. Hold on, hold on. Jimbo, come here. Come here. Come here. Hold on, hold on. We gotta we gotta say hi. Jimbo, come here. Come here. They wanna say hi to you. Come here. Bye. Okay. Okay. Say hi and bye. Say hi bye. Say hi to your adoring fans. They love you and they miss you. Okay. Thank you. I love you too. Okay, bye.